Let's talk about creating tables in Microsoft Word just like these. In this short tutorial, I'll show you how to create your very own tables, how to adjust their layout, and how to style your tables so you can present your own information neatly and professionally. So let's get to it. We're starting off with a blank Word document. Let's go ahead and insert a basic table. Go to the top of the page where you see the ribbon, the toolbar in Word where all the magic happens. Then click on the Insert tab. Here you'll find various options to add different elements to your document, but we're interested in the Table button. Click on it and you'll see a grid pop up. This grid lets you choose how many rows and columns your table will have. Just hover your mouse over the grid and you'll see the squares light up and your basic table being created right before your eyes. Click on the grid when you've highlighted the number of rows and columns you need. And there you have a basic table. But what if you need something more specific? Maybe a larger table or one with more customization options. In that case, go back to the table drop down menu and then select Insert Table. In the new window, you can precisely define the number of rows and columns you want. Now you have your basic table, let me show you how to adjust the layout of it. If you click on a cell in your table, you'll notice two new tabs at the top of the ribbon, Table Design and Layout. Under the Layout tab, you can add or delete rows and columns. Let's say you want to add a row at the top of this table. Click on the top row of your table, then go to the Layout tab, and under Rows and Columns, click Insert Above. And that's your new row. The same goes for adding a column. Just select where you want the new column and click insert left or insert right. You can also add rows and columns by right clicking on an area within the table and going to insert, then select an option from there. What about the opposite, deleting rows and columns? The process is actually rather similar. Just select a row or a column and then go to the layout tab, choose delete and then you can specify to delete a column or a row. You can also right click on the table and choose delete cells to quickly remove rows and columns. Adjusting the size of your rows and columns is also easy. Click on the border of a row or a column and drag it to your desired size. Or to be more precise, you can go to the layout tab and manually enter the dimensions you want into these dialog boxes here. You might also want to distribute your rows or columns more evenly. To do this, select the rows or columns you want to distribute evenly. Then go to the Layout tab and click on Distribute Rows or Distribute Columns. This will ensure that your selected rows and columns are equally spaced. Let me now move on to talking about merging cells in your table. Say you have two adjacent cells. One contains content while the other doesn't. What you can do in this instance is merge these two cells to become a single cell. To merge these cells, select both of them, then go to the Layout tab and click on Merge Cells. The two cells are now one, and your content can be spread across a wider space. You can also access the Merge Cells option by highlighting the cells you want to merge, then right-clicking on them and choosing Merge Cells. Another way you can quickly merge cells is by using the Eraser tool. With the table selected, go to Layout, and then in the Draw section, select Eraser. When you then hover your mouse over your table, you will see it appear as a rubber or eraser icon. Simply click on the borders that you want to remove, or click and drag to remove multiple borders. When you're finished, just select the Eraser option again, or press the escape key on your keyboard. That's how you merge multiple cells to become one. What about the opposite, splitting a cell into multiple cells? To split a cell into multiple cells, select the cell that you want to split, then go to the Layout tab and click on Split Cells. A new window will pop up where you can specify how many rows and columns you want to split your cell into. I'll split this cell into two columns and click OK. As before, you can access this option quickly by right-clicking on the cell and choosing Split Cells. And if you're doing this action over multiple cells, 
have a look at the draw table function. Go to layout and choose draw table. You can then simply add in where you want to split your cells. You can easily do this over multiple cells quickly. And once you're done, select the draw table option again or press the escape key on your keyboard. All right, so that's the main table layout options that you'll likely need covered. Let's now adjust the look and design of our table as it's currently just a boring grid. With your table selected, head on over to the table design tab. This contains all the key features you will need to really spruce up the look of your table. Perhaps the quickest way to change your design is to use Word's preset table styles. If you hover over each style, it will temporarily apply the style to your table so you can preview what this would look like. There are quite a few styles to choose from, and you can see them all by selecting this downward arrow here. If you like the look of a particular style, you can apply it by simply clicking on it. With a style applied, you can also quickly adjust the table by tweaking some of the options found in the table styles options here. For example, if your table contains headers in the first row, select this option and the style will emphasize the first row. You can also apply banding to the rows and or columns to give every other row or column a shading effect that can make it easier to read the content in your table. That's a quick overview of using the preset styles, but let me just go back to the start with formatting and quickly change the style to what we started with. If you want more control over the appearance of your table, then you'll want to use the shading and border options up here. To change a color of a cell or cells, highlight them, then go to shading and choose a color from the drop down menu. After changing the cell color, you may want to adjust the color of the font inside the cell for better contrast. To do this, you need to go back to the home tab and use the font color options here. Let's now move on to adjusting the borders of the table by switching back to the table design tab. All the tools you need are in the borders area here. There's three things about the borders that you can tweak, the line style, the weight or thickness of the line and their color. When you adjust these settings, you will notice that the cursor has changed to a paintbrush icon. This means that the border painter tool is selected. Now you can click on an individual border to adjust their style or click and drag to adjust the style of multiple borders. And once you're done, select the border painter tool again or press the escape button to remove the tool from your cursor. Another thing you can do to quickly change the borders in your table or cells is to go to the borders option here and hover your mouse over an option. For example, you can choose to apply this style to all inside borders. And if you like an option, just click on it to apply it. By playing around with these settings, you can really create some clean, professional looking tables within just a few minutes. And that's the main things you need to know about creating tables with Microsoft Word. If you want to learn more about using Microsoft Word, including how to repeat table headers on every page, then check out my channel. And I'll see you there.